We're recording. Hello. Hello. So tell me about you. So my name is Tammy Huff. Tammy Huff. Um, I married David Huff. We have three children. What's the ages? Uh, my daughter's 22. My middle son is going to be 17 on Friday. Oh, he's close then, to my birthday. And then, oh, really? Yeah, mine's tomorrow. Oh, that's right. And then uh, Levi will be 15 the end of this month. Really? I remember when they were small, we were all playing baseball with my two middle kids. I know. But you're getting them out. I mean, that you, the age range to dawn is a lot closer. I know. And I'm not sure if I'm excited about that or sad. I have these mixed feelings yeah, about this. I have a, a 10 and 11 right now. And that's where I'm at. I don't know if I'm happy they're growing up because yeah. the old ones moved out and they're doing good. Uh, yeah. One of them just moved home from Oregon. So, I mean, they go out and they nice. come back. And yeah. It's, it's been, a, it's good to have the kids. It is. But it's good to see them go. <laughs> and it's good to hang out with my husband. Yeah. So. So you don't have to, once, once you get all the kids out, you don't, or even to a certain age, you don't have to worry about. Yeah. I mean, I think we're kind of at that age where we take a once a week date night. Mm -hmm. and it's yeah. like, okay, you're on your own. Yeah. Find your own food. Get some food yeah. on your own. That's right. Definitely right. <laughs> Yes. So tell me, did you go to van school when you were growing up? So I was born in California. Oh, I didn't know that. I was. Um, moved to Houston when I was about two or three years old. Okay. And lived there until I was 12. Oh, no shit. And then my parents decided they wanted to get us out of the city. Yeah. We had some friends here who were here with the ministry. Okay. And so we moved to van. And so I've lived here since I was about 12 and a half. So you, you what, what school, now, what age did you start van school? So that's an interesting story because here I am a teacher at van. Yeah. Um, the last six weeks of sixth grade, we moved to van, which okay. is a terrible time. Junior yeah. high and all of that. And it was a complete culture shock to me. Like, So you went from Houston to here? To van. Like public school Houston? Uh-huh. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, definitely culture shock. Yeah, I mean, I was not the majority at all. And my friends were of every race and color mm -hmm. and everything. Yeah. And I moved here where it was predominantly white and everybody wore boots and jeans and <laughs> listened to country music. And I was like, I don't know what's happening, but I cannot do this. <laughs> and I begged my parents to send me back to live with friends. And they were like, no, that's not an option. So they actually homeschooled me oh, okay. for three years. And then when I was a sophomore is when I went back to band. Okay. And then graduated from the So you were a sophomore, junior, and then senior. Correct. I got you. Yeah. Now, not to ask your age or anything, but what year no. was that? So that was 92. Okay. I just turned 48. Oh. So. I'm not that far behind you, though. No. I'm feeling 44 tomorrow. Oh, well, you're kind of still a baby. Yeah. I, I <laughs> wish I felt like a baby. We did crawfish last night. and This morning, I'm definitely not feeling like a baby. No, oh, you're oh, feeling yeah. every bit of that 44. Every bit of it. My wife's feeling it worse because she was up more than I was. Well, I'm sure she was planning it. Yeah, all yeah. Stuff. She she was exceptional. So you moved to Van. You graduated high school here. Yes. And then you went to college where? So I just went to TJC in Houston, yep. Tyler, because I knew it first grade that I was going to be a teacher. Did you? What's, that's very much my personality. Is I kind of know what I'm going to do, and that's what I do. Oh, then. And so in first grade, I decided I was going to be a teacher, and that's what I did. And so went to. PJC graduated with an associate's degree, went mm -hmm. to UT Tyler, graduated with a bachelor's degree, and started working at Van Junior High right away. Yeah. So, so I mean, that you just, uh, how did you know when you were in first grade that this is what you want? I don't know. Well, it's was a it a funny, teacher? It's a funny story. Okay. So, you're talking what, 80s, early 80s, and Wonder Woman had just come out on television. <laughs> yeah, I remember Wonder okay, Woman. And you know what she looked like? And yeah. she was amazing and superhero. And she was our my first grade teacher was named Linda Carter. Really? And I thought, I think my teacher's Wonder Woman. <laughs> and I thought, that's what I'm going to do. Oh, no. Crap. And that's what I, <laughs> I mean, I'm not Wonder Woman, but I became yeah, a teacher. I get yeah. it. That, I mean, that, that inspiration yeah. happens. I mean, I'm. It's van science teachers that make me love science and technology as much as I do. Yes. I mean, get, to van's credit, it's incredible to see how many people who have graduated from van come back to teach it. Oh, yeah. It's definitely not a, I got to get out of here. I hate it every second. It's, there's, I loved it here. There's people 
in this town in, in age groups that do that, but it's not the majority. No, it's definitely and a lot not the of majority. them as they age will they do yeah. to come back. Yeah, they definitely so. do. I, I have a kid in uh West Virginia right now. Uh went up there to go to college yeah. and all this stuff and uh met a girl. College went out the window and uh -oh. now he's working and now he's breaking up with a girl two oh. years later and he's calling me and he's like, Dad, I think I'm coming home. And I'm like, son, I want you to come home. But stop for a second, go go get some snuggles from grandma and think about what you're doing. He's like, oh, Dad, I can't take this on. I'm like, Yeah, look, son, take a deep breath. Yes. And don't do anything rash right now. Yeah. Just stay with grandma, eat. Grandma feels good food. And uh -huh. he's like, Dad, is that what you do? Do you stop my hell no, that's not what I do, but I want you to do better than I me. Know, I'm like, come home, baby. Yeah. Come home and take care of you. Yeah, definitely. But you're right. You want him to work through that stuff oh, yeah. instead of running away from it. it does, exactly. The, as they go out there in life, and, and I'm sure you see this in a lot of your students, that everybody makes mistakes and then you yeah. have to, hey, that, that's not okay. You can do better. Do right. better. Right. But I see a lot of mistakes. I'd rather them make it young ages. Oh, yeah. So they can learn and not make those bigger mistakes as oh, adults. Definitely. Definitely. So you graduated UT Tyler. Started at Van, uh, at what position? Same position you're in now? So I, when I graduated, I graduated in December. So you don't usually get a teaching job okay. in January or December. They hired me as a full-time sub to work in, like, with some behavior students. Mm -hmm. And then, then the fall, I got hired as a reading gotcha. teacher. Okay. Now, I taught for five years, and I took off for 10 to be a mom. Okay. And then I came back nine years ago. And oh. started at the middle school and then moved over to the so junior high. Where were you at first? The middle school then? When you the when first I came years? back, I was at the middle school first. Okay. I was there for four years and then I've been at the junior high now again for five years. Oh, well, that's a lot of kids. That amount of time is a lot. Of, I mean, yes. I can't say nothing. Miss Persifield that taught me, I want to say, I want to say it was junior high reading. Oh, yes, it was. And uh, she knew, had my grandmother. No, not my grandmother. She had my mom and my uncles. Yes. And uh, it's... that's kind of where I am. I'm starting to get <laughs> kids of kids who I taught. And I'm like, what is happening right yeah. now? Yeah, definitely. Yes. So, I mean, it's in you going, running for office correlates into that. I mean, you, you, you to me, a teacher has a responsibility in their life. They're, they're, we're giving you our kids to, in a way, prepare them for the future and that what you're doing with this race is you're you're taking the responsibility for what's going on around town not right. just in the classroom right and that's especially not just being a teacher but being a mom mm -hmm. and knowing that for david and for me this is where we want to stay yeah. we built a house this is where we want to be and so when i started thinking about it and i talked to different people and it was like if you're going to invest in a community, then invest in the community. Yes. Don't sit back and just watch things happen. And so that's what I did. And I'm kind of that personality, that fixer personality. We have a problem. Let's fix it. Yeah. When the tornado hit oh, every yeah. single day, I was out there that next summer, tearing down houses, cleaning out people's yards. Let's fix this. Let's get back to what we need yeah. to be. Correct. Yeah, so, it was. That was a extreme time it that was. was insanely extreme yes the you're not just involved with the school you also involved with a bunch of extracurricular activities with the school though correct right i'm also i'm a tennis coach mm -hmm. so i coach the junior high tennis team and then i assistant coach in the fall the varsity tennis team okay is so. that is that all you is just tennis i thought you might have been involved with something else just, just tennis? tennis okay yeah my, my kid mm -hmm. You screamed at him enough that he he actually played good tennis. Well, I had to beg him to come back a couple <laughs> Call his mom. Send that kid back to yeah, me. Yeah, he's something else. <laughs> he's definitely so he's a good kid, but he what? Anyway, he does right now. I think it's every sport Van has. Uh -huh. He's in it. Every one of them. Yes. I, I don't. I'm hoping they don't tell him about like table tennis or something because right. he'd be into that as well. Right. Yeah. He was the other day. He called me. He's like, Dad, uh, come pick me up. I'm like, You're not at home. He's like, No. I'm like, Okay, I'm getting in town. Where you been? He's like. Oh, we had a track meet. I'm like, man, you just had basketball, baseball uh -huh. game last night. Yes. But yeah, he's he's into everything, and and we're seeing that more with this kid. 
he's in that, and then the school is adding on other things. Like they got a rodeo team now. I know. Yeah, he wants it on that. They've got a cooking team. I didn't hear about the cooking team. team. Uh-huh. Oh, barbecue team. Uh huh. So can I go back to school? I mean, is that an option? <laughs> I know. I'm like, man, I could have done a million things. Yeah. I mean, I went to home. I had home ec. Yes. I spent most of my time in shop with Mr. McCaffrey and yes. drafting, but I I had home ec. And, yeah. Uh, it's completely different than than what it is now. Oh, they're competing against other schools yeah. now. It's it's a it's little insane. Pretty, yeah. Yeah. It's impressive. So speaking of that, you working at Van ISD, Van ISD is the biggest employer in this town. Right. And how does that correlate with uh, a position as mayor? So I'm really proud of our school district. Okay. Like, I think it's amazing. Now, does everybody have their own opinion about things? Of course they do. But I think it's amazing. And I think that it is cutting edge on a lot of technology um a lot of our educational programs especially in the high school Mm -hmm. allowing our kids to get certifications in air conditioning in welding in mechanics getting licensed in real estate i mean the possibilities have become endless yes and i think there's a huge draw to families to want to come to our school district and we're an open district now we are an open district what I'm not seeing so much of as is the pull to move to our district. Yeah. I'm not seeing so many of those families going, wow, then the city, the town, the mm-hmm. community is an amazing place for me to raise my family. Yeah. Yeah. It's the school's great. And guess what? I get to come here whether I live here or not. Mm-hmm. I want to see that brought together. I want to see our town and our city having that same reputation that our school district has. Yeah. I want to see our town and our school district working together and not being so much the city at odds with the school district. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Because there are times when I think if it weren't for our school, where would our town be? Oh yeah. Oh, I'm a big you know what I mean? fan. I, I and so big. I think that we need to be working together. Yes, definitely. So definitely. And that there's there's a lot of things, and I haven't done a lot of research on any of what the town is currently invested in, right. where they're going with stuff. And and I, I haven't done it mainly because I knew I was supposed to do this, and, yeah. I, and I wanted to get some of those new things that, that's going on. And uh, how much, how often do you go to city uh, council meetings? So I had been to a couple before in mm-hmm. the past, but when I decided to get into the race, I've gone to every one. Yeah. Um, I can't say that I've been involved with city council or yeah, I yeah, think yeah. a lot of what I see is just what's projected to the community and public mm-hmm. and not all of that has always been positive. Yeah. And so I'm hoping to maybe change that culture as well. I understand. So, so what is your feelings on some of the expansion that's going on right now? Is there things you would uh, promote more? There's things you would change. Okay. So i <laughs> I kind of have mixed feelings about some of it. Okay. And let me explain why. I love Van for the town that it is. Mm-hmm. However, I know that towns that don't grow will die. Yes. So I, I see both sides of that. My concern is I don't want to be Lindale. No. You know what I mean? I, I don't do. want to be just nope. an extension of Tyler. I really want Van to have its own personality and its own identity. And so... Yes, I want us to grow, mm-hmm. but I also think it's important to keep that small town feeling. Oh, yeah. Um, I know there are some things going on where they're wanting to expand down 314 and make as much commercial as they can down 314. As a homeowner in that area, mm-hmm. that's a huge concern to me. Yeah. And so, and to speak to that, I think there are some things that maybe are not as transparent as what they should be yeah when somebody elects me i hope to be the mayor it's not me who's going to be making the decision i'm just a voice of this community the yeah people who voted for me and so i need to take into consideration their feelings mm-hmm. not my bottom line yeah you know i mean i so do know i don't want to come off like well, this is what I want, and this is what we're going to do. <laughs> yeah, 
And I think sometimes people can come off that way. Definitely. And I'm not speaking of anyone in particular. But I'm just saying, I don't, that's not what I want. I want there to be transparency. I want people to know where our town is wanting to lead or go in the direction of, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah. But I also know that everybody's going to have an opinion. And it's going to be different from every other person who has spoken to me. No. And so that's when it comes to the point where then I have to look at it with wisdom and decide, okay, what's the best for our community? And even though if everybody doesn't agree with it, can it be beneficial so that in the future someone would see the benefit of it? So when you say that you would like to see more people move to Van instead of just sending their kids to our schools, what do you mean by that on the housing market? Are, are you referring to we need to build more um like subdivision type homes or, or personally that's what i would love to see more neighborhoods yeah um and that kind of comes from my background when we lived in houston we lived in subdivisions and there were kids to play with yeah. and there was that community feeling where i live now it's probably one of the few actual neighborhoods we all have each other on a group tag it's yeah. that great community feeling when I moved to Van and it was like you have a street of houses here and then you've got a commercial building here and you yeah. I just didn't feel that community neighborhood type situation. No. Um and also I think because the way some of the housing is done and we're putting some really brand new nice houses in lots that we have available, but there's still not that neighborhood yeah. feeling there. And so I would love to see some developers come in and build is, some. Is that something the city can promote? Um, I mean, oh, I definitely think it yeah, is. I do too. I definitely think that we can. Um, I mean, Ralph Miles, for example, he's a builder in this area who tends to build neighborhoods and subdivisions. Okay. Um, he would be easy to contact and just be like, hey, we'd like to develop this. What do you about it now not just go with him but i mean just get some yeah. ideas from him or see what we could do areas we could build because if, if you're not and that's the thing well, for I, you know i got seven boys and you you take that if i wanted to move those boys back here after they grow up the housing market is not huge in van right now no even to rent yeah and i am fully for people renting homes and all of that but I also know that I'm the one paying taxes. Mm-hmm. And if we don't have a lot of homeowners living in this community and paying taxes into this community, I want someone to have a stake in this community. Oh, yeah. Yep. I don't want you to just come to work here and then leave and you have no stake in this community. So on that, do you feel that the expansions that we have going down 314 is not going to be good for us? So, no, I think that the expansions are good. I just think that you have to be careful that you're not impeding on residential areas. Well, I know that they're building the new, the third truck stop on the other side of 20. Okay. And before I found out that we're doing that, there is a lot for sale. I want to say two lots past that. It's okay. like 20 acres and it goes way back. And we went and looked at it because we're wanting to vote to buy land this year. And when we drove back, we saw the sign for the new truck stop, and it was like, yeah, it's a no. Immediately, it's a no. Just because the amount of traffic that comes through there is is not going to work for a family, not for my no, family. Anymore. No, and that's what I totally agree, that I don't think that we need to just be sticking buildings in open lots for the sake of, oh, well, we're bringing in more businesses, and we're expanding the businesses in our in our town. I think it has to be done in a very thoughtful way. And it has to, the people who it will affect need to be considered and not done secretively. Do you think there's a lot of that going on? I think there could be. Yeah. And this is something I asked uh, in an interview I did earlier was I asked if the city council meetings were uh, uh, recorded or broadcasted. And I don't believe, or I was told they're not. Are they? Do you know if they are? Or they're not? I have no idea. Because I don't know why that wouldn't happen. Because that's, I don't ever have time to go to a city council meeting. I'm always on the road back and forth. And right. If they were 
live on Facebook or something or recording. I know that they had tried the last one I went to because we had two city council members out, and so they brought them in through Zoom. Zoom, yeah. Um, and through that, I think they were trying to either do a Facebook Live or something yeah, to that effect, should. and technology, they couldn't figure it out. And so well, Maybe I'll go down there and volunteer some Well, tech. and that's the thing, too. I mean, as a teacher, my whole life is technology. I mean, <laughs> definitely presenting to kids not only do i teach a class but i also during that same class and teaching two students from the middle school through google meet i got you and so these are things that we can figure out yeah and that's that's something that I, i will say on that level you are bringing a lot to the table from being a teacher and you're exactly right because when we went through all that COVID stuff a lot of the teachers they had to learn tech quick Yes. Because everything changed. And thankfully for Van, we had already started that. Yeah. I mean, yes, it was a total culture shock, but not as badly as it was for some other yeah. towns. Yeah, definitely. So so what is what is some of your opinions on the things in the town that's normal, like streets? Um, I mean, that that's always comes up when you talk small town Honestly, politics. that's probably my biggest concern. Is streets? Is streets. Okay. Um, and it all goes back to the, how are we presenting ourselves? I mean, when I come down Main Street and there's a section of the road that goes beside the old Dollar General that is Caliche Rock. Yeah. That's a city street and we have Caliche Rock. That is not an oil top road out in the middle of a pasture. That's in town. That to me is totally unacceptable. And what are we spending our money on? that we can't repave one street a year. I'm not saying come in and let's repave the whole town and make it beautiful in one year. I know it's a process. I think my concern is I'm not seeing that process. I mean, you look at Spruce Street. Nope. I've been down. I know it's terrible. Yeah. Terrible. I think they do one street a year, but I don't think it's more than one street. I I don't even know where it would be. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you, you got to find the street i right? might appreciate if yeah. they if they're going to put stuff on facebook let's put that on facebook yeah take some pictures of it and show us what you're doing yeah because my taxes are high oh, I know. and I, know. I understand that part of that goes to the school and the call it all these different places i understand that but i need to see something yeah i think the majority of uh their budget comes from sales tax is what I've been led to believe. At the last meeting I went to, they were talking about the sales tax revenue that had come in. Mm -hmm. And I think they had projected a million dollars for the year. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mr. West felt pretty confident because we were at the 400,000 something mark. So he felt like we were doing well in that projection. So, but I know too, and you and I had talked about the city pool a yes. little bit. And I know that with um, hotel motel tax, those taxes have to be spent in a particular way. Um, so I know that money has to be allocated for other things. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I think that, I think some people need to be held accountable for how the money's spent. Yeah, I understand. So. But, and, and you have that. When projects keep going on and you don't have enough information about them, mm-hmm. that's that's going to be a lot of people's concern. Mm-hmm. So what do you feel about the pool? Because that's how I started this podcast thing was okay. I wanted to know what what how if people were going to vote for a pool, because when the pool left, it the pool and the lake left at the same time to me. I know it was a little bit different. It was different time zone. But in my brain, it they took the pool and they sold the lake and. Then what was there? Yeah, there there was nothing. There was nothing. And my kids, well, excuse me, my wife and all my generation, they learned to swim there. My uncles kicked me out in the lake and told me to learn to swim. But normal people learn to swim <laughs> at the pool. And I, I've i had four or five pools in the backyard, and it, but it's still not like a public pool. Right. And a lot of people have told me, yeah, we support the pool. What is your thoughts on the pool? Okay. And so uh, I do have a little bit of a different point of view because I actually worked at the pool. 
And my husband worked at the pool. He was a lifeguard at the pool when he was in high school. Uh, when he and I first got married, we lived at the apartments at the swimming pool. And so mm-hmm. I became a manager of the swimming pool for uh, two okay. summers. And at that point, we had a lot of kids come to the pool. And we had a lot of people who would rent the pool for parties and that sort of thing. But the pool was losing money. And so the city was constantly having to make up the difference. Yeah. It was not supporting itself. Okay. Um, plus, I mean, because you were paying um, lifeguards and you were paying upkeep, electricity, mm-hmm. all the chemicals, all the stuff, um, manager. Now we had like a small concession stand, but yeah. that didn't really no. bring in anything. It was more of a, we're going to kind of take a loss on this to have it. Yeah. But I mean, you, that that's sort of like um, a basketball court. I mean, you only pay for it one time. Right. But you take a loss for it right. to have it. So it, is it that much of a loss? Honestly, I don't know. Yeah. Because I don't know what the repairs on it would have caused. Yeah. I think now, though, with us having this new McMillan part. Yeah. I mean, I think it would definitely be worth checking into. I definitely think that like I had maybe said to you, that hotel motel tax. Yeah. If we can spend so much money on the cement pad for the Christmas tree, which I love, don't yes. get me wrong. But if we can spend money on those things, why can't we put some of that money into a pool? Oh, yeah. I completely And agree. then also provide summer jobs for teenagers that in our was, community. And we have a lot of kids that do that that goes to Splash Kingdom. And, and my second thought when I was talking about this is that there's a lot of those kids that can work right here that already have training for right. Splash Kingdom. Exactly. And a lot. Splash Kingdom doesn't have a full pool. No. So you can't send your kids to Splash Kingdom and get. Uh, well, and the lists. thing is, too, is. We know everything costs more these days. Oh, yeah. Those tickets can be expensive for young families. Definitely. Especially if I have a two or three year old. Do I just want to take to the pool and let them splash around a little yep. bit? So I would really support checking into that, but I would also be careful of making any promises because oh, ultimately yeah. it will come down to money ultimately. Yeah. And like I've said, it's my money. It's your money. Mm-hmm. It's the homeowners and the landowners in this community. It's their money. Yep. And so it needs to be spent wisely. Right. How, how far do you see yourself going in this? You, if, how, how long can a mayor stand in how many times can you rerun? Is there a limit? You no, know no, I don't think there is a limit. Um, I've looked at it and I haven't seen. It's a two-year term, from yeah. what I understand. I've tried to find different information about being mayor. I've talked to um, Sarisa Huff Huggins mm-hmm. at City Hall and just to try to get some information about because I wanted to make sure. Yes, I am busy. Yes, I am a mom. I am a wife. Um, I wanted to make sure that I could fully do this position, do this job um, to the best of my ability. Because if I couldn't, then I'm no better than anybody else. Correct. Yeah. Um, and I don't want my name on something that's not great. Oh, yeah. So, um, but what I found is a two-year term. Um, you know, I don't know. I'm going to take two years at a time. Yeah. Well, the, the reason I ask that is because a lot of the projects we have in Van are long-term projects. Right. They're not something one mayor is going to come in and then all of a sudden just make everything change. Or some of these projects, you as if, if you win, you might put into to movement. And then three mayors down the road is when it's successful and it completed. For example, take the uh, McMillan Park. That that thing was multiple uh, city council members and mayors throughout the last what five years, six years. Mm-hmm. So I mean these these are long term things. That's that's why I was asking if you if you thought this would be something you did repeatedly, and but you don't know. This is the first time you've ever run. This for, is the first time. And to speak to that though, Clyde, I would say like if I can set something in motion, mm-hmm. and then I decide, you know what, this is too much. I can't do this as well as I want to do this. Yeah. Um, I don't care if someone else finishes yeah. it. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's I like, if it's better for our community, great. Yeah. 
I don't have to have my name on it. I don't have to, I don't need the bells and whistles of it. I can start it and let someone else oh, yeah. finish it. What um do you like the new park they got? I do. I do too. That's... I think there's been an issue with parking and some things have been said about parking, but yeah. Yeah, I think it's really nice, and I think uh, it has brought some people to our town, because I know that we used to go to Canton or to Lindale yep. to visit the parks there, and it's keeping people here, and I think that's what we want to do. Oh, yeah. We want to offer all those things, and I think it's great. I do, too. I, I, I really like what they did. Uh, speaking of the pool, some people brought up that, you know, we don't have basketball courts around town, and that's something that... I think, I don't know why we don't, because when I grew up, we went to the school and played basketball. Well, and that's why I think, you know, we live by the junior high and there are people out there playing basketball mm -hmm. all the time because there are basketball goals set up in the yeah. parking lot. So that's, yeah, I forgot about those because in my brain, I forget that school. Yeah. I was the generation before that. Before opened. that school was yeah. there. So yes. I went from here to there and yes. in my brain, we used to come here. We didn't go there and you're right. And it's yeah. a whole, everything keeps growing. But I think too with the park, it's gonna be, it's gonna grow. Yeah. You know, what I mean, it. This is not a. Does it have more space room? Well, but I mean, it's what forty acres. Yeah. I think they are gonna be able to add to it and make it better all the time. I don't think this is. We're putting in a track. We're putting in a playground. We're done. Yeah, I don't think so either. I don't think so. So I think that the more people give opinions about what might be great over there, mm -hmm. then that will give the city a vision on what they can do and what they need to plan for. Yeah. What's some, uh, what, what's your main thing that you're running? on? Just disclosure. Give me more. I want to make, I want the city, the city council to be respected. I want people to see it as a respectable organization mm -hmm. that they can trust and that they can go to as they have needs for this community or opinions for this community. And it's not a joke. Yeah. I get it. That's my goal for the city council. I do get it. It's uh that that is commendable. It, and it's 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 every two years. So as far as I understand it, you get a new mayor every two years right. and you get what three? No. You're gonna rotate council yeah, members. Council so members. two this time. And then Three, the next time. Yeah. Two, three, yeah. Correct. So, I mean, it's it's a re revolving. That's, that's a good thing about, I guess, democracy in this sense is that if if we don't like what you do in two years and we you have to do it all over again two years after that. Yeah. Unless unless you get into situations where everybody's like, you're doing such a good job, we're not running. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, I'll take it. Yeah, that's, that, that's the easy work. But also, I maybe two... My example of running might lead others to run. Oh, yeah. You know, that, might be like, hey, I can do that. I love this town. I want better for this town. Let me get involved. Yeah. What um, you, you mentioned about how you would like to see the town itself grow versus down 314. What's some of the things you would do or try to get done for our downtown business areas? Because it's that's something that I believe. Um, Five or six years ago, they had some kind of uh, grants or something to go for uh, the frontage on all the businesses. They were trying to get everybody to upgrade yeah. and make downtown look prettier. You know, I don't know about downtown, but I don't want it to go away. Yeah. Because think about when you go to any town. We go to Galveston. I love Galveston. My favorite place is to go down to the historical downtown section. Mm -hmm. So I think that we need the progress. Um. As much as I don't know that we need three truck stops, we're getting them, and that's going to be great. But we do need to encourage smaller businesses maybe to come down to downtown and yeah. rent those buildings and start small businesses and that you, kind of thing. How many buildings do we have to rent now? I mean, are we going to expand? So I know that there's a, that speakeasy's coming in, uh -huh. and I'm really excited about that. Okay. I hated when Bill Holum closed his place down just because I don't like having to drive all the way to uh uh Ben Wheeler to have a drink and eat. Yes. So even though Bill Holland's tacos were not that good, <laughs> I still frequented that place as much as I can. Yeah, because they had something they had something that appealed to you. That's right. And that I'm 
really enthused about the idea of this the speakeasy restaurant opening and especially if he can get some blues singers in there I okay i would enjoy it <laughs> oh somebody that sings like otis redding i'd listen all day long but it there is growth going on down there. i don't know how much real growth is because you and from when i was a kid you got four or five shops that are new and that's it right it's the same thing i mean i don't know the donut shop was there but the the dry cleaner went out of business. Yes. And now it's somebody's uh, roofing business. Roofing. I think it's, uh-huh. Yeah. So uh, to me, a roofing's a contractor. It's not necessarily like a business you walk into. Right. And I, I really wish that we would expand some down there. And it seems like that is what's mostly down there when you think of like real estate and mm-hmm. insurance and surveying. And those aren't places that you're necessarily walking into and buying a product. No, they're not. Um, and you know, I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I think maybe the speakeasy will help. Recently. I hope so. I hope. You know, more of those type that, businesses down. We went to Wills Point for one of Easton's baseball tournaments, and um, they have a downtown they do. foot traffic area. And we went to, I took my wife and my mother in law to every, I mean, we probably spent three, four hundred dollars. Uh huh. And it's about soup and all kinds of stuff <laughs> in a bag. Yep. But it, it was, it was nice. It's not like Mineola. Right. It, it's, it was, it was, it was actually, to me, it was nicer than Mineola because Mineola's got stuff mixed in. And yeah, I didn't they've see got there. a cute town. Yeah. At this point. And I've always wished that for Van because like we opened, me and my ex-wife opened the bakery there beside the Telly's at one point. Okay. And I told her when she wanted to do it, there is no foot traffic in Van. And I mean, the coffee shop, has the laundromat on the other side, which is ingenious to me. Oh, that's smart. Smartest thing ever. It, it, but it's out of the way. It's right. way over here. Right. I always thought a coffee shop would do good downtown. Yeah. But I, clearly, I think there's a couple of his open and it didn't make it. But I know a lot of you teachers get coffee at the uh, uh-huh. laundry room. <laughs> yeah. That was very, very You know we and, need that coffee every yeah, morning. <laughs> definitely. We all need coffee. Um, so do you have anything else you want? To uh, cover, I can't think of anything. So you're you running any- for mayor. Oh, I do running. I have any questions? Yeah, I mean, do you have any other questions that <sighs> you want to ask me? You've covered a lot. I mean, we talked about the pool. We talked about Van ISD, which is one of the things that I was, I was, I'm not concerned with it. I was just wondering how that, and I'm, and I'm not going to call it a conflict of interest at all, but right. that that dynamic of you working for the school and you being the mayor of the town. Uh-huh. I mean, I, you can't say that that can't happen because the school's so damn big. Oh, right. But. And Claude, I'll tell you, I had thought about that because is there that conflict of interest? Mm-hmm. Is there the, well, what is she doing? Is she trying to improve the school yeah. or is she trying to improve the town? I think that we can both improve and both grow with each other. I just felt like there was more of a conflict. And I think maybe I can be that go between yeah. to stop that. Oh, uh, I'm like I, so far, and he can change his mind tomorrow and, and make me change my mind. Okay. But Don Dunn has not done anything that I don't agree with yet. And he's made a lot of decisions that I sit back and I think, man, yeah, that's exactly what I would do. Yes. Now he can change, he can do something tomorrow. I'll be like, man, I, that Don Dunn dude. But well, can't we all? So far, yes. he has made all the right decisions that I love. Right now, if you told me he did something I didn't believe in, I'd say, no, I, no. I got to check on it because he has a track record. Right. Every time I've needed something, every time something's come up, I've been able to reach out to him. I mean, I had an incident with one of my kids at the high school and I reached out to Don because I couldn't get a hold of anybody else. Right. He did not respond right then. But as soon as he saw it, he's like, hey, did this get took care of? And I was like, yeah, I mean, yes, sir. Thank you. I mean, it's always been. His leadership in the school, I have like especially because my kids are there but i've always wondered about how much power the school has over our town i like what what has went on right. i have no criticism for what's what's went on so right far. but I, it it is the biggest employer the majority of, of people that live and work in van work for the school every yes. all of us other people we drive out of town right but Y'all work here, and that's that's a good thing to me. And, and I, honestly, I, I would want a teacher 
our business owner to be the mayor, not somebody like me that drives all the way out of town that that not here every day. Right. Y'all are here. Yes. When the, if anything bad happens, you can go play golf. I'm here. Stop it. <laughs> I just play. <laughs> I'm a I'm a big defender of Big Dean when that happened. And the reason I am is because this is I'm, I make that joke. Normal people complain about it. No. And my deal is that he might have been wrong for being on the golf course, but I'm a dad. And you just seen one of them try to walk in here. That man raised his son right because I was down there with his son. That old man can't go down there and cut trees down, but his yeah. son was down there cutting yes. trees down. And when everybody talks about that, I get it. Dean should have not have been on the damn golf course. I agree. But the man raised a good son that was out there. That's the only credit I ever give him because in my mind it's like, look, when I'm that old and I can't. I might as well go golfing too. Well, and I think my argument for that, because I, I mean, I was in the middle of that. Mm-hmm. I, I was working. Mm-hmm. I don't agree that he should have gone to the yeah. golf course. But for all the people yelling, how many of them were out working? Oh, I know. I, I completely agree. Yep. And that's my whole thing. And that's why I'm running for mayor, because I'm not going to sit back and complain and gripe and if I'm not willing to do something. No. Nope. So be willing to do something. Thank you, Jim. That's Thank perfect. You. That was a perfect <laughs> ending right there. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Wonderful. See, that wasn't hard. That was 